Today, we're going to look at one way to apply knockback to your enemy AI who are using a nav mesh agent. This can apply to guns, this can apply to explosions, or even a melee attack. Hey, Chris here from Mom Academy, here to help you. Who? Me? Yes, you. Make your game dev dreams become a reality by helping you make your players even more powerful with the knockback effect. And we're going to be using a physics based knockback on our enemy AI with a nav mesh agent. And you might be thinking, Chris, you can't use the physics system and the nav mesh agent at the same time. And you're right, you can't. But the process of applying a physics based knockback to a nav mesh agent is relatively straightforward when we consider that we cannot use the systems together. So all we need to do is disable one, enable control of the other one, and then switch back whenever we're ready. What that means is we can have a rigid body that's marked is kinematic and have gravity turned off attached to our nav mesh agent, along with the collider. If we make the collider slightly smaller than the nav mesh agent radius, that makes it so we can have our physics looking similar to the nav mesh agent moving around and having the obstacle avoidance working still on the nav mesh agent. Whenever we need to push back the nav mesh agent, and we're gonna be using a shotgun in this example, whenever that happens, we disable the nav mesh agent, enable the rigid body by turning off is kinematic, and turning on use gravity, apply a force to the rigid body, and then we can use whatever logic we like. We're gonna wait for the rigid body to stop moving and then set the rigid body to is kinematic false, disable gravity, reset the velocity just in case, warp the nav mesh agent to that location that they're at now after they've been knocked back, and then re-enable the nav mesh agent. And while that sounds like a lot of steps, that's literally the entire process. I've chosen in this video to use the gun series so we have a gun system so we can shoot our nav mesh agents back. If you haven't watched a lot of the AI series or the gun series before, that's okay. We're going to talk about most of what you need to know in this video. If you want to learn more about some specific topics that maybe you didn't understand in this video, I'll have links in the description to the AI series and the gun series videos that are most applicable to what we're talking about today. But if you haven't watched the gun series and you're like, I just want to apply knockback effect, that's okay. I'm going to talk about how you can apply this more generically than the specific example we're talking about here. Let's jump in and check out the scene. Let's start with our enemy AI. We've got this llama that's going to be our enemy. On here, animator is not super important, but you can play different animations like a get hit animation, something like that. We're not going to handle that in this video because we did a pain response animation in the gun series, and I'll link to that video in the description. You can use the exact same thing here. We've got a nav mesh agent, not anything super important here, just that the radius should be slightly larger than the collider. So I have a capsule collider with 0.5 radius our obstacle avoidance radius should be slightly larger than that capsule. Also, a non-zero stopping distance is very helpful. In fact, we should probably increase this to about the radius. We want a rigid body with is kinematic is true because a nav mesh agent will be driving where this rigid body moves. Whenever we apply the knockback, this is kinematic will be flipped. This is a heavy llama, 75 kilos, with some drag and some angular drag. The mass that you put here will influence the force you need your guns to apply. So if you use a mass of one, which is the default, you'll need to use much smaller force values than what we're gonna see here. So we also have a capsule collider. It should just be a normal collider. Ideally, we'll be on the enemy layer as well. Again, the radius should be slightly smaller than our avoidance. Future Chris here, an important piece of our collider is the physics material. We can apply friction and bounciness to our colliders. So whenever they collide with some object, they will bounce more or less and slow down faster or slower. Higher friction means that they will slow down from the knockback push much faster. Higher bounciness will make them literally bounce off the walls. Our floor and any walls can also have different physics materials that have different properties to really control how this knockback effect works as we slide over different objects. For example, if the enemy AI is standing on ice, this ground friction would probably be very close to zero, but standing on something like dirt or concrete would have a much higher friction value like one. The values we'll use are one on the ground material for both dynamic and static friction, zero bounciness, and on the llama, we'll have 0.4 dynamic and static friction and zero bounciness. But of course, feel free to play with these in your own game. And you should also have some kind of movement script, and that's where we're gonna apply the knockback, is within our movement. Importantly for this video, we also have a enemy player sensor that whenever the player comes within this trigger collider, the sphere trigger collider, the llamas will start chasing the player, and that's just to get them to group together so we can apply some cool knockback effects to a group of llamas. That's really the only important pieces of this. We've already baked a nav mesh, and we've got a player that can well, let's just click play. And we've got a player that can shoot. Like with shotguns, you a lot of times have some kind of a knockback effect. 
So that's what we're gonna to implement today. You know, here at Lom Academy, this channel is all about education teaching you how to make your game dev dream become a reality. That's why I want to talk to you today about this video sponsor, Southern New Hampshire University, or SNHU. Southern New Hampshire University offers low cost online degree programs for both computer science and game design and development. Both of these are accredited degree programs. That means you're going to be learning important information about how to do programming, how to do game design, how to do 3D modeling, and much, much more. Courses at SNHU are taught by professors with real world experience. And when you graduate, SNHU will help you with your job hunt. This is a great opportunity for you to really dive into a structured approach to learning programming and game development. I went to college and graduated over 10 years ago. I feel like this was a really important step in my game dev journey because now I have a really good foundational understanding of a lot of different concepts that we use routinely in game development. Even some of the courses I was like, why the heck am I going to take this? Like linear algebra, calculus three, I find myself having to use, especially on this channel. So if you're interested in going to college and getting a good foundational understanding of all of these topics that we talk about here at Lom Academy, head over to snhu.edu slash Lom Academy, fill out the contact form there and a real person will get back to you to talk about which degree program is right for you. Again, that's snhu.edu slash Lom Academy. It's the first link in the description fill out that contact form and get started on your college degree. So if we want something to be knocked back, something I like to do is to make an interface so we can apply that to any type of object, not just the one object we want to hit. And since this is an impact effect and I'm using the same gun system from the gun series, I'm going to add that to the impact effects folder. Something like I knock backable, make sure to make that an interface. For this interface, we just need one function, get knocked back. And that should accept a vector three with the force that we would like to knock back this thing with. And then either with your gun or your bullet, whatever you have that does the impact on whatever ends up getting hit, you're going to want to call that get knocked back. So from the gun series, we have this handleable impact, which is called whenever the bullet hits some object, it plays some surface impact effects like particle system sounds, whatever it applies some damage and then has some kind of collision handler. And we could probably have used this collision handler for the knockback, but I think this way will be just a little bit easier to understand using the eye knockbackable because you probably don't have all of this stuff. But if you do, and you've been watching the gun series, I'd challenge you to go ahead and implement this using the eye collision handler instead of the eye knockbackable. Now, after we've applied damage, let's apply the knockback. So we can just try if hit collider, try get component out, I knock backable, knock backable. What we're gonna wanna do is apply that force, right? So knock backable, get knocked back with some force. But how do we know what that force is? Well, because we're using the gun system, I went ahead and made a knockback config scriptable object, which just holds what kind of strength we should apply. So the knockback strength and some kind of distance fall off. If you're not using the system, you can set this up on your gun or your bullet. However you configure, how does this gun shoot or how does this bullet apply damage? You can put this in that same place. So if you check that out in the Unity editor, we have a scriptable object called shotgun knockback config with a 25,000 force and a distance fall off where at point blank range, it's gonna be full strength and it'll fall off relatively slowly up until 10 units away, at which point we'll apply no knockback. This way, if something's really far away, we don't apply the knockback. We might think maybe more realistically, the knockback effect would be more like this, where it'd very quickly fall off, but that's a little bit less fun. So farther away, we can still feel powerful knocking the enemies back. You can play around with this curve, of course, and see what makes the most sense and most fun for your game. So the key part of this is we're going to evaluate the distance fall off at however far away we are times the direction and the knockback strength. So we're going to get some kind of force that falls off over the distance and it's going to have the direction that's passed in. We'll come back to our gun scriptable object or wherever you're handling the bullet impacts. So we can call knockback config dot get knockback strength provided the direction, which we happen to have available as the hit normal. We'll use the negative hit normal since in this function, now we only have access to the hit normal and not the original direction. If you have the original direction of where you did the raycast from, that's probably what you'd like to use. If you only have the raycast hit, you can use the negative hit normal with negative hit dot normal and the distance from hit dot distance. And if you have a bullet, if you're using rigid body physics, you should have something like on collision enter. In which case you can use the normalized impulse, which would give you a pretty good value for that as well. Or you could use the collision contacts, the first contact and get the normal of that. And that'll also give you a relatively good value for you to use here. 
Now, once we've gotten our knockback strength, we can just apply that here to say, hey, knockbackable, get knocked back. So now we need to actually get knocked back and that's gonna be done in our enemy movement. So the first thing we can do is make it implement the I knockbackable, which then we can implement the missing members. Well, before we implement that, let's just take a little bit of a look around at what's happening here in the enemy movement. So on start, this AI is gonna just randomly roam where it's gonna pick a random location on the nav mesh and just try to move to that location. If it gets called stop moving for any reason, it's going to stop our moving coroutine and disable this agent. We have an ability to be slowed down. That's not really important for this. So we'll skip over that. This also handles when we see the player and when we lose the player that comes from that player enemy sensor, we're gonna stop moving and then start chasing the player whenever they come in range. And whenever the player goes out of range, we're gonna just start randomly wandering again. And when we're chasing the player, we're just setting the destination to that player's position and waiting some time and then setting it again. What we do there is not super important. The important piece is that we have a move coroutine that will need to stop whenever we get knocked back. So we stop trying to chase the player or stop trying to move. Now in your game, this is gonna be the part that you need to figure out based on your movement. What do you need to stop doing and how can you make them stop doing that so they can be knocked back? Since there's so many different ways to handle movement, I can't provide specific guidance other than what I'm showing you here that it's really helpful if you have coroutines running and you can stop them to stop that behavior from happening. Okay, coming back to the code, we wanna use the rigid body to move whenever we're getting knocked back. That way it's controlled by the physics system. So we need this to also require component type of rigid body. We'll create a private rigid body rigid body and assign that on awake. Then we'll come to the get knocked back. The first thing we're going to want to do is stop the movement coroutine. Then we're going to assign move coroutine to a new coroutine where we're going to be moving using the knockback. We're going to start that coroutine and we're going to call that function apply knockback and we're going to give it the force. And in here, that's where we're gonna do all of the movement related to what should we do and when should we re-enable the nav mesh agent. And I found that you usually wanna wait one frame before you start doing any of this stuff, just because sometimes there was some carryover from one of these other coroutines and you'd start getting some errors logged to the console. We're gonna to wanna to disable the nav mesh agent. So we're no longer gonna be moving around and no longer be tied to the nav mesh. We wanna enable rigid body use gravity and we wanna disable rigid body is kinematic. That way the rigid body now has control and should behave realistically. We'll then add the force to this rigid body. Then we want the coroutine to wait for some time before we re-enable the nav mesh agent and have the nav mesh agent start doing whatever they were supposed to be doing, which is most likely chasing the player. We wanna wait for the next fixed update. If we don't wait for that fixed update, sometimes the AI won't get knocked back because the force hasn't been applied to that rigid body yet. So we can yield return a new wait until with an arrow function here, rigid body velocity magnitude is less than 0.05, which since this is a magic number, maybe we can refactor this out to be configurable in the inspector. Let's call it still threshold. We'll make it a serialized private float, still threshold, give it a default of 0.05, and maybe give it a range from 0.001 to 0.1. Anything higher than that, and you'll probably be able to tell that they just stopped abruptly and it's not gonna look very good. If you want, you can also do something like yield return new wait for seconds, 0.25, so they are like stunned at the end of their knockback for a quarter second, or you can just have them immediately chase back. Either of these is fine, depending on what you want for your game. Now, once we've decided, okay, we're done being knocked back, we want to basically undo what we did up here at the top. We're gonna to wanna to reset the rigid body velocity and angular velocity, just so we don't have any residual knockback effects for the next time. Then we wanna disable gravity, re-enable is kinematic, and then very importantly, we need to warp the nav mesh agent to our current position. This tells the nav mesh agent that, hey, I've been moved without your knowledge. You're now here. So then they'll snap to the nav mesh at that location. And then we can enable the nav mesh agent. Again, I found that it's best to wait a frame before we start doing something after this. And then what we can do is determine what should we do from here. So if you're using a state machine or behavior tree, you would use that to determine what to do from here. Since we're using something very simple here, we're just gonna check if the player's not null, meaning they're within range. We saw that on C player, we assign that transform. So we'll know they're here and we set them to null whenever they're gone. So if the player's in range, we're gonna set the move coroutine to be start coroutine chase player. Otherwise, we're just gonna idly roam. And this segment right here is really a key piece of this. We want to disable the nav mesh agent, enable rigid body physics, apply the force, wait until we're done being knocked back, disable the rigid body, warp the agent, and then start doing whatever we wanted to do before. So let's take a look at that over here in the Unity editor. We actually don't need to do anything to get this set up because we're using the enemy movement, which is already there, and we already applied the knockback effect in our gun. 
And there we go. Our agent gets knocked back. They do a little warp and then start chasing again. But we can see sometimes our agents, maybe their velocity doesn't fully reset and we can just throw our agents through one another. So there's a few things that we still need to do. Part of our problem is whenever we see and lose a player, we're gonna try to start roaming or start chasing the player and the nav mesh agent may be disabled. What we can do is just wrap these with if the agent's enabled to do that because it's possible for the player to enter or leave the radius while they're getting knocked back. It's actually very probable, depending on the force configuration you use, that the player will go out of range. So here's one thing that we can do. And another is it might be nice if we have a max time to wait before we start enabling, because maybe our agents just have a really slow, they just stay right above that threshold, and we don't want them to appear broken, never coming back. So we can do a float, knockback time setting to be time dot time and we can check if our magnitude is less than the still threshold or if the time dot time is greater than knockback time plus max knockback time and just in case you're not familiar with wait and tell what it does is it checks this delegate function every frame so we can wait and it'll check that this thing every frame whenever this delegate becomes true wait and tell will be done and we'll move on to the next line so let's set up a max knockback time and let's set it to be like half a second or something. Because remember, we're gonna wait a quarter second as well. So this gives us max knockback time effectively is three quarters of a second. We have one more thing that before we go back, I think would be really nice to see. And that's what about having the agents push one another? Right now they can just fly right through each other or even get blocked by the other agents because the agents have a collider on them. Whenever we try to knock them back, they can just get stuck, which doesn't look very good. So something we can maybe do is make a new script called knockback on collision. And we want this to be a mono behavior that requires a component type of collider. All this is going to do is on collision enter, which is called whenever one collider collides with another collider. If one of them has a rigid body, we can say other dot collider dot try get component out. I knock backable, knock backable. And then we want to call knock backable dot get knocked back with some force. But how do we know what force to use? Well, there's this neat property called impulse on the collision. We can work out the total force applied by dividing the total impulse by the last frames fixed delta time, which is exactly what we want to do. We want to apply the force that I was just hit with to this object. Here, much like earlier, we want to use the negative impulse because the impulse is in the wrong direction. It's in the direction that the other collider applied force to this object on this collision. So what we can do is on our prefab for our llama, we can add that knockback on collision. Then if we click play, we get all these llamas to start chasing. And just in case your enemies fly through one another still, make sure that you have your enemies on a layer that collide with themselves. So now we can see the llamas bump into each other and push each other back. That's pretty cool. I guess the last important thing to note is if your llamas or your enemies ever get too far off the nav mesh, you can't warp them back. So it's important to have some kind of way to keep them on the nav mesh. And you can handle this in a few different ways. One option could be every frame of that knockback, you do nav mesh sample position and make sure that the nav mesh agent doesn't leave the nav mesh. Another option is you could just design your levels where they can't be knocked off by putting in clips or walls to prevent the nav mesh agent from being pushed off. And I'm sure you can come up with some other clever ideas that I haven't thought about so far. This is something that's been requested a bunch of times on the channel, and I'm really excited to finally have gotten able to cover it. If you want to learn more about how the shotgun was created, make sure that you've liked and subscribed. So you can stay up to date whenever I cover this on the gun series in a couple of weeks. And you haven't already checked out the gun series, I highly recommend you check out that playlist. We cover everything about having a highly customizable gun system using scriptable objects. The full project for all my videos is available on GitHub for free for everyone. If you think that's really awesome and you want to show your support for this channel, go ahead and head over to patreon.com slash Salam Academy or click join or super thanks right here on YouTube. That means a lot to me and it helps me out a ton. If you don't have the money for that and you still want to show your support for the channel, Use the affiliate links down in the description to the Asset Store and Humble Bundle. Those give me a small percentage of the purchase price at no additional charge to you. And that also helps me out tremendously. And I want to give a special shout out to all of my supporters on Patreon and YouTube. Your support makes this channel possible. At the Phenomenal and the Tremendous tier, you get access to this super cool Dissolve shader that's exclusive to these supporters. Starting at the Awesome tier, you'll get a shout out at the end of every video like these awesome supporters. Ivan, Rulin, Ifiabolus, Perry, and Mustafa. There's also all of these great supporters as well. Thank you all for your support. I am so incredibly grateful.